In today's experiment of the kitchen, we're going to try a new four ingredient fudge that's supposed to taste just like Butterfinger candy. Hi there, and welcome to my channel. My name is Angela and I'm the Inquisitive Farm Wife. I'm so excited that you're here with me today. If you haven't already, make sure you push that subscribe button. How many of you uh, get really excited over candy corn when it first comes out? Maybe you caught a sale, so you got some extras and you tried to preserve it and you weren't really thinking and you accidentally put it in a vacuum sealer and realized that wasn't a smart idea. So now you can't use your candy corn like candy corn anymore. Oh, it was just me. I get it, okay. Just me, just me. So what happened was it all stuck together. And then I did a little research and I found out you can make fudge out of candy corn. No, you don't have to go through the whole vacuum sealing process like I did. You can use fresh corn right out of the bag. Candy corn, that is. So what I did is I took my big mass and I broke it up and um, I'm going to be tripling this recipe, but I'll put a recipe down below for you. It's actually just three cups approximately of candy corn. So I have approximately nine because I thought, well, I might as well go ahead and make a big batch, right? It's what I do. So I'm gonna throw that into the pot. But let me show you what I got going on over here. Before we get any further, I'm gonna show you, I have a double broiler system going on. Now I've read recipes where you can actually put this in the microwave, but because I have such a large amount, I wanna put it on the stove but it is, you know, it's not all going to fit in my double boiler. So I'm going to make, do a makeshift one where I have a larger pot where I have put water down below. And then I have a smaller pot inside there. So I've already got the water warming up. I put my corn in there and now we're going to add sweetened condensed milk. And at this point, this is all you need to do. You just want to keep stirring it until all the candy corn has melted into the milk. And you want a double boiler or a microwave because you don't want that milk to scorch. I almost made a big mistake. <laughs> Good thing I had all my ingredients set out and ready to go. And I would read the recipe a few times. You also need some creamy peanut butter. One cup per recipe. Now the fresher the corn is, the easier it's going to be to melt. We're not real sure what's going to happen with this candy corn, being that I vacuum sealed it, but that's what's fun about this. It's going to be an experiment. You can kind of, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but it's starting to take on a little orangish tint. Our candy corn is starting to melt. You can see our water down in there. And um, it's going to take some time. The candy corn takes a bit to melt. But just be patient. Okay, I think we have pretty much gotten all the pieces melted. And so I can now shut off the stove and we are gonna add white chocolate chips. So you need to add two cups of chocolate chips per, um, per, per recipe. So I have some funfetti chocolate chips. I think they'll work. I couldn't find my white chocolate chips. And there is about two cups per package. So now um, the heat of the um, melted peanut butter and the peanut butter, the sweetened condensed milk and the candy corn should melt your, your um, white chocolate. 
<laughs> I had to use some unicorn chocolate in there too. So I've got a, a few other colors, but we're just going to blend this and I think it'll be fine. I guess we'll find out in a few minutes, huh? Okay, it's gotten really thick. I think I've got everything mixed in. Oh, I think I see maybe a little chocolate chip there. I just want to kind of blend it in real well. And now we're going to put it in a pan. The recipe called for an eight by eight, but I'm going to use this large, large cake pan because it's a triple batch and I have sprayed the pan and then I put the, it'll get the parchment to where you can bend the corners just perfectly. And then I went ahead and sprayed the parchment, hoping it's not going to stick. And guys, this part is the dangerous part because the double boiler is going to make the pot really hot. So I'm going to try to bring you along and show you what I'm doing and not burn myself at the same time. <laughs> so I've got my apron on, which is going to help. And I'm going to put this towel on my arm here. It is definitely hot. That's the best angle you're going to get, friends, because whoo Hot, hot, hot. And then we're going to spread it out evenly in the pan and leave it out to set for quite a while. Um, you can put it in the refrigerator to harden up. Kind of try to spread it out. You can't play with it too much because fudge kind of... It's finicky. You gotta work with with it fast. Try to get it as level as I can. I might even give it a good tap there. Now I know it's hot. We gotta give it a try. Mmm. Ooh, that's pretty tasty. Mmm. That's good. Okay, friends, we have let this set for several hours. I'm sorry about the lighting. You can't see, it's it's definitely got an orange tint to it, but unfortunately my lighting went out, my undermount lighting, so we're just gonna deal with it. But it's, it's, really, it's really a cool um, brownish orange color. And I've got some cute little boxes here and I want to package this up. But before I do, I want to drizzle some chocolate on top of it, you know, because Butterfinger has chocolate, right? And the recipe calls for one cup of semi-sweet chocolate. Remember, we did a triple batch, so there's about two cups per bag, and I only have one left, and I happen to have a partial bag of the dark chocolate, so I'm going to mix them together, and I'm going to put them here in my double broiler. i got to turn on the stove to a medium heat. And how this works is you have your pan and you don't, okay, I can see a little bit of water on there, but you usually do not want your water to actually touch your pan. And um, so all I have to do is just put my chocolate chips in here and then that way they will melt slowly. We want, we don't want them to, have you ever had chocolate chips that dry out and then it gets I don't know if it's like pasty or I, I don't know. All I know is I like a softer, creamier, more like a ganache, but I want it to set back up. So you can either do this or you know what? That candy bark isn't too bad of stuff to use either. While I unloaded the dishwasher, you can see the chocolate where the um, heat is from. You can see the steam coming up has melted, so we want to kind of mix this in and let it keep melting at a nice, slow, even pace. You can do this in the microwave, but it seems to me when I do it in a double boiler, I have way more control over the end product. I don't want the chocolate to seize up, and that can happen. So I'm going to turn my stove down just a bit because the steam's really boiling out of there and it doesn't need to be that high. Kind of vigorously stirred there and um, it really showed how much was melted. We are very, very close to being done. 
Okay, now that our chocolate is almost done, I'm going to unwrap the fudge, which to keep fudge fresh, you do not put it in the refrigerator. It can be frozen, but it could affect the product. You just want to wrap it very tightly. So I'm going to hopefully get this to come out in one piece because we have the two pieces there and it did perfect. So get this out of the way. And it looks like my cutting board is just, just big enough. And I did this on a cutting board. You can do it on the counter because if you have your parchment, it's going to protect your counter. But I did this so that I have a little lip right here. I didn't want it to be uneven, but it would be easier to cut. So I've got this opened up flat. Let's check on this chocolate here. Oh boy, almost. A few more stirs here. I think we are there. So I'm gonna shut this off and then I'm gonna grab my double boiler and I know the steam. I don't want any water dripping on my fudge. So I'm gonna wipe that off good. If you have a smaller batch, it would probably be easier to individually, you know, cut it, individually drizzle, drizzle some over. But because I've made a triple batch, I've made more work for myself. And you only have so much time to work with this chocolate. So I am just going to spread it over the top. This will probably make it a little easier for when I go to cut and serve it too. Get out to those edges if you can. I love fudge, don't you? Fudge is one of those things that was a real treat. We didn't have it really often. It was like a vacation treat. You know, if we went somewhere where they did the old fashioned taffy pull or the fudge, then that was when we got fudge. Just kind of try to make a little bit of a design as I make sure that it's all equal all the way to all those edges. Better lick the spoon. Mmm. Mmm. I love semi-sweet. I love dark chocolate. Put them together. <laughs> Yum. This rest for, I don't know, probably an hour. What I did is I just took the pan and put it over the top just to make sure that you know, everything stayed nice and clean. That's a little trick I thought I'd share with you because, you know, it's got the beveled edge on the side. And so it's going to be more narrow and that's why it fit upside down so well. And what I want to do is I want to try to see, you know, like one, two, I could probably get four in there. But how wide, you know, how wide do I want to start? So, I think I'll do about that wide. And it's nice and soft. I wish I had my cake. Oh, there it is. I thought, never mind. Hold on. I'm going to get my cake knife out. I thought I had loaned it out and I looked and I saw and I have it. This is a cake knife I bought from a bakery, actually. And this makes it so that you can make one swift, even cut across here, whether it be a cake or fudge or no matter what it is. And I'm gonna try to pull straight up and we're gonna wipe this down. I've got a paper towels back here. Wipe it down so that there's nothing sticky on it each time. And I'll use my smaller knife here. I'm going to try to divide this into fourths. Approximately. And I think this will fit right down in that little box, hopefully. And this fudge, if stored airtightly, it should last, you know, a few weeks even. So this will be perfect for, you know, gift giving. And 
take a look. There it is, our Butterfinger fudge. And I just want to wrap it nice and tight, snug in those little corners, wrap it around, back under again, and then I'll just tuck this away. Oh, I think it's gonna fit. Just perfectly fit down in this little box. And how cute to have this to gift. And I'll put some labels on it. Maybe I'll tie a little string or something on it and uh, make it a little more gift friendly. I'll do the same thing with the other size box. I'm gonna get busy with this. You get busy making the fudge. Let me know what you think. Is this something that you would like to try? And if you do, tell me, come back, get in the conversation in the chat down below and tell me, have you ever made it? If you do make it, what did you think of it? Guys, thanks so much for being here today. I appreciate each and every one of you. And the best way that you can help my channel is to share out this video, like, subscribe. See you next time, friends. Bye for now.